Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Black Shape launches the BK-160 Gabrielle. Craig Fuller says alternative facts surround ATC privatization debate. And Tom's River, New Jersey introduces restrictive drone ban. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's April 18th, 2017, and this is Airboard Unlimited. Italian aircraft manufacturer Black Shape introduced the new BK-160 Gabrielle at Aero Friedrichshafen. The company said that the BK-160 Gabrielle represents a major milestone in the small aircraft sector with a full glass cockpit resembling modern military trainers. The airplane's aggressive attitude with sporty finishing are inspired by the handmade tailor style with a touch of Italianess in its design. The airplane has a top speed of 164 knots and a structural envelope of plus 5 and minus 2.5 G. Manufacturing of the BK-160 Gabrielle relies on modern and robust technologies such as a full pre-impregnated carbon fiber airframe as well as robotic assembly and lean smart factory approach. Black Shape has already obtained its design organization approval from EASA together with its first type certificate in the EASA CSVLA category. The aircraft now available to the market targeted towards experienced pilots looking for a fast and agile cross-country airplane or advanced flight school. Former AOPA boss Craig Fuller continues to make a lot of sense as he opines that we should be wary of what he says are alternative facts around airspace modernization talks. Fuller says that White House economic advisor Gary Cohn participated in a recent White House town hall meeting focused on infrastructure and other initiatives. He believes that many alternative facts were presented while discussing ATC privatization. Fuller says that the idea of establishing a private nonprofit entity to provide air traffic control services has been bandied about for more than 20 years. Without gaining traction and notes that other countries where such privatization has been successful have much smaller systems than ours and the transition takes years. Given the current achievements and pace of modernization occurring in the U.S., major structural reform now could actually slow the progress we are making. And there's no guarantee such an effort would create savings. Fuller writes, Fuller says that one of the principal advantages of what we have now that the entire system meets one standard. He also challenges assertions that a privatized ATC would result in cutting down tarmac delay and flight times. After the break, Tom's River becomes the latest anti-drone town. Build and fly with the most exciting line of kit aircraft on the market, the Sonics Aircraft B-Models. The B-Models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at earl-news.net. Here we go again. The Toms River, New Jersey Town Council has introduced a very restrictive ban on small UAVs in response to alleged complaints from residents. The ordinance would ban all flights under 400 feet with penalties as high as $2,000 and up to 90 days in jail. A councilman claims that there have been increasing complaints about drones. 
He said residents have complained about the aircraft flying overhead, with one neighborhood expressing upset about a real estate agent using a drone. Some residents claim that the realtors are using drones to scout homes for listings or obtain more information which doesn't necessarily require a drone. Complaints also led to a ban on door-to-door real estate solicitation, while drones appear to be the new boogeyman. Exceptions to the ordinance include flights by law enforcement and emergency services. Flights could also be flown over sporting events or township owner property and over private or commercial property with owner consent. Finally, drones could not be used for data collection without the permission of the property owner. The ordinance would also require that drone operators register their aircraft each year with the township for a $70 fee, of course. The restrictive regs are on the council agenda this April 25th. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. This April 22nd to the 23rd at Tyndall Air Force Base, Florida, we highly recommend that you check out the Gulf Coast Salute. Tyndall is the home of the air dominance, and after watching the air show, you will know exactly how and why they got their name. For this year's show, they've pulled out all the stops and will feature performances by the Thunderbirds, the F-22 demonstration team, and many more. The 2017 European Business Aviation Convention and Exhibition will take place from May 22nd through 24th at Geneva's Powell Expo. Thousands of business leaders, government officials, manufacturers, flight department personnel, and all manner of people involved in nearly every aspect of business aviation will meet to conduct business and make buying decisions. eBase Exhibits will showcase more than 500 exhibitors and 60 business aircraft on static display. The AEA West Connect Conference will take place September 6th through 7th, 2017 at the Grand Sierra Resort in Reno, Nevada. The annual conference connects GA professionals and have grown beyond simply receiving regulatory updates and technical training via classroom-style lecture. Attendees now engage with interactive discussions and analysis while avionics repair stations, manufacturers, regulators, and educators show an increasing desire to come together and network. After these messages, new leadership announced for the AIAA. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Dr. John S. Langford, Chairman, Founder, and CEO of Aurora Flight Sciences Corporation, has been elected the next president for the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. He will serve as president-elect alongside current president James Jim G. Mazur, assuming the office of president in 2018. Rockwell Collins has completed the acquisition of BE Aerospace, a manufacturer of aircraft cabin interior products and services, for $8.6 billion in total consideration. Rockwell Collins has now nearly 30,000 employees and pro forma annual revenue in excess of $8 billion based on calendar year 2016 results. A thermal tile went missing from the Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex in Florida last week, and officials of the complex are hoping to have the artifact returned. 
The tile is not one that has ever flown in space. The six inch square tile encased in plexiglass was in the care of an education volunteer making a presentation at the center Sunday when it went missing. Gripen has for the first time undergone test flights with 100% biofuel, demonstrating that the aircraft can be flown with an alternative fuel. Demonstrating that Gripen can fly with 100% biofuel is an important step in making Gripen future safe, says Goran Binksting, Director of Research and Technology Future Business Aeronautics. A drone operator cited for interfering with a rescue operation in California failed to appear in court and a warrant issued for their arrest. The drone pilot was cited by police in January after he allegedly flew near a helicopter attempting a long line rescue over a Pacifica cliff. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's get back to the rest of the news. Colorado Springs will not be building a World War II aviation museum in the downtown area after legislation that could have led to the project funding was tabled by the Senate legislator. Mayor Jim Southers made the announcement to the city council. The city has originally hoped to build a downtown stadium and event center as parts of its City of Champions initiative. But a February study showed that the project did not make economic sense. The National Museum of World War II Aviation offered an alternative project to bring a part of their collection to a new downtown facility. The museum hosts a large collection of World War II aircraft, though most of them would have remained at the airport facility. Nearly four years ago, the Colorado State Economic Development Commission set aside $120.5 million for sales taxes over 30 years to pay for downtown stadium and other major projects. The necessary bill, SB 248, provided the authority to approve modifications to the previously approved regional tourism project, but was tabled with no timeline for reconsideration. The Economic Development Commission opposed the bill. The museum, however, still plans to expand on the 21-acre campus it occupies at the airport, but without downtown museum addings. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited stream daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest in aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow.